Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Daryl here. Hope you're having a great day. Well, the topic we're covering today is all about compression. Now, before we get into all the nitty gritty of compression and limiting, here's the honest truth about compression. It is the most used effect and you've probably never listened to a recording without it. So perhaps with the exception of equalization, there is nothing audio engineers rely on more than compression. Let's find out why. Now I've got a pedal board full of compression pedals. If you don't know why, I'll put a link to the video above. You can check it out there. It explains the whole thing. But what we're going to do is look at some examples, what compression and limiting does to a signal. And of course, look at all these pedals and talk about why you need one on your board. Now, first things first, I'm going to record a clean guitar track, put it in my computer, and we're going to talk about what compression is, what it does, the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> All right, you guys, so we've dumped our audio into the editing program. There are no effects on the signal at all. Let's take a listen. Cool, now that is very, very quiet. If we pull up our level meter here, I'm just gonna make it like super ginormous. Okay, so we're, you know, the loudest part of that clip is at about minus 12, which is very, very quiet. So we need to boost the signal. Now there's a few ways that we can do that. One of the ways is just to increase the volume of the track. So if we copy that track and paste it here, uh, what we can do is just take that signal and make it louder. So there it is. We take a listen to that. <laughs> Now in comparison, much louder, but we've peaked, which means we've passed the zero dB marker right here, which means we are gonna get distortion. And it only gets worse once you add, you know, bass and drums and stuff. It's a cumulative effect. So even if we made it a little bit quieter, it would still be peaking, okay? So that is no good. Just a straight volume boost, um, you know, most of the time will not work. And that's where compression and limiting comes in. So let's take that straight unaffected uh, signal again. Let's put that on a new track. Here it is, let's, whatever, make it yellow. Now, what we're gonna do to this track is add some compression. So let's go over here, grab our compressor, throw it on the track. Just gonna zoom in a little bit here. Now, as you can see, we've got our compressor. Now, a compressor works usually with three main controls, the ratio, the threshold, and the knee. Now, the ratio is how much we're going to compress the signal, and you can do just a little bit, or as you can see here, uh, we can really slam it, and you know, when we make that knee almost zero, it's all, it almost becomes a limiter, like the audio will not be able to pass this mark. But that does create some issues, as we will soon hear. So if we boost it up, uh, somewhere around to where we were and the threshold kicks in. Let's make that a little higher. I think uh, it was, I think the, the raw one was about 12. So let's make it about 12 where it kicks in. There we go, it's about 10. So let's take a listen to that. <laughs> Now the issue right away is the audio effects that, uh, you know, having a compressor clamp down like that really creates some weird. So almost like a breathing effect where it kicks in and like lets off, kicks in and lets off. It's like a, yeah, a really weird effect. So we can't have that. So. We don't want to, you know, make that compressor so intense. So what we're going to do is take the ratio, back it way off, and as you can see, you know, it becomes much more, you know, reasonable. And we could do somewhere around 1.8 there. Um, and then if we take the knee and soften it up, you'll see the line becomes a little bit more, you know, less harsh. So if we just take that and make it, I don't know, let's make it six or seven there. And then our threshold, 
you know, probably where we are is somewhere, you know, pretty good. Now this is still very hot. I think it's a 12 dB boost, but if we take it down to, I don't know, about 10, it's still going to be much, much louder than our stock signal. So here it is. And there's still a little bit of that effect, but if we bring up our, our noise meter, uh, or our level meter, let's see what, what we're uh, dealing with here with just a little bit of compression. So that's not too bad. We're basically between about minus nine and minus three with that guitar part, looking pretty good. So let's try one more example where we use a limiter. So I'm going to copy that, we'll paste her here, let's dump it on a different track again. And let's make that red, or pink's fine, that's no big deal. Okay, so here's our track, let's pop on a limiter. So we'll grab a limiter from the side here and put it on. Now this track does not have any compression on it, that was the yellow track, it's just the straight limiter which is on the output here. So what a limiter does is it doesn't allow the signal to peak. So it will clamp down um, and you can usually make it almost as loud as you want to. So let's go to back to plus 12 again, which is a massive, massive boost um, and see what happens when we play this track. <laughs> So as you can see, compared to just the straight volume boost of the same amount, so this one here was I think 12, 12 dB boost as well. Let's make it the same. I think it was 12.1, there we go. See if this peaks without the limiter. Oh, let me turn the limiter off. That would make a big difference. Here we go. And then with the limiter on. it doesn't peak. So that's a really good solution. Now when we combine limiting and compression, so let's go back to our yellow track. So this one has some slight compression. So there we go. Yeah, just a really nice touch. You can also uh, up the gain here on, you know, to make up some of that lost volume uh, right within your compressor. Um, but I think we'll not do too much of that, maybe just a slight, well, let's just do like a 1 dB boost or something like that. Um, and then uh, let's check how much we're boosting this track. I think it was about 10. Yeah, so about 10 plus this one here. Let's see how that does with the limiter and the compressor. <laughs> So I think you can still hear some of those, uh, you know, artifacts. Oops, I didn't have the limiter on. We should do that again here. Too many clickages. And then I want my level meter here as well. Let's try that again. Okay, here we go. So that's a pretty hot signal. We can actually even boost it a little bit more. Let's go to like 13. Let's like really slam this thing. And uh, what we can also do is we can act, actually add an EQ before the compressor as well, um, just to maybe add back a, a touch of our highs because the compressor kind of takes some of that away. Let's put just a slight EQ on it and then grab our level meter. <laughs> Now again, let's compare that with the original signal. So that's a brief explanation as to what compression and limiting is and why it's so important for processing audio. 
Now, because we're a guitar related channel, I almost never use a compressor plugin, but I will use a limiter just to keep the signals kind of from peaking there. Um, but yeah, because I have a tube amp, it naturally compresses the signal. Um, because I use overdrive pedals, those naturally compress the signal and I run a compressor on my board. Now, before we jump down and look at all these different compression pedals for guitarists, I will say one thing about overall mixes. Uh, compression and limiting can be overdone. If you want some interesting reading, just search for the loudness wars. It's fascinating reading, um, basically talking about how in the 80s, you know, the dynamic range was quite wide. Your louds and softs, all that different, uh, you know, range was in there. Then in the 90s, it started to squish down and get louder. And then in the 2000s, squish down and get louder. And modern music now is like from minus three to zero, the whole thing, even the quiet parts. You know, individual tracks all squeezed down. Full mixes then all get squeezed down. Then when it goes to mastering, all squeezed down again. So every stage, uh, all the audio signals have just been like, like this even the quiet parts are like minus six to minus three everything is so so compressed probably with the, the exception of classical music which they try not to so on classical music even on you know in in the modern era here you know they want if you're you know recording an orchestra and there's a part where a solo violin is playing something really emotive they want that to be quiet you know, and then when the brass kicks in, they want it to kind of punch you in the face. So, you know, that's probably the most notable exception, but most modern music is just, you know, overly squeezed. Now, the reason for the loudness wars and the overly compressed music is because we listen to music in the car with tons of background noise. We listen in restaurants, we listen on the treadmill, you know, so on and so forth always with some sort of background noise and you know i think very few people just listen to music in a quiet environment where they can enjoy some of those louds and softs um, and there's a certain energy that gets created when the mixes really get scrunched so those are some of the reasons why that happens all right, so now let's move on to guitar specific compression pedals. Now, a compressor should be the first pedal in your signal chain, um, but here we've got eight amazing options. So, we've got the Alien compressor from Analog Alien, uh, we've got the Robert Keeley, Behringer, JHS, uh, Strymon, Orange, Electro Harmonics, and of course, Boss. So, let's just I don't know, take a spin, look at some of the features and hopefully, yeah, find the one that would be right for you. So I'm just using the midnight uh, telly that I was using earlier. Uh, here we go. Let's start with the analog alien. So we've got sensitivity ratio and output. Now, one of the hallmarks of, you know, compression is it adds a ton of sustain to your guitar tone, especially if you're playing clean. And on, you know, low output, you know, tele single coils, that's pretty awesome. So if we crank the ratio to get a lot of uh, compression, let's see what that does. Yeah, really cool. So if you're struggling to get like a really smooth kind of lead tone, add some compression. Uh, this one sounds absolutely great. If we back it off, let's take the volume back down, sensitivity down a bit. Volume up on my guitar. Yeah, and this one doesn't seem to, uh, you know, rob your signal of a lot of treble, which some of them do. So, yeah, this is a great sounding pedal. Let's move on to the Keeley Compressor Pro. This one is built as studio quality, and you can see why. We've got threshold, ratio, attack, release, gain, plus a couple dip switches. So, and metering on the front. So, let's try that out. Really nice, tons of sustain. Uh, let's see how much we can do. So I'm gonna take the threshold all the way down, which means we'll be compressing, you know, pretty much all our signal. Turn the ratio up. Attack can be fast, release can be medium, and we're probably gonna have to add some gain. Oh boy, that really squishes it.
So yeah, if you want that really poppy sound, I'm gonna turn the attack like all the way down, ratio all the way up, threshold down. Here we go. So if you want that kind of poppy sound, that's how you get it. Uh, so much flexibility on this one. Um, and there's actually an auto mode. So if all these knobs kind of like, I don't know, intimidate you at first, just flick it to auto and play. Let's turn that gain back down. Speaking of compression, I'm pretty sure uh, I massively peaked there. So that's a welcome feature. Just turn on the auto, off you go. Now moving on to the JHS, sometimes simplicity is a good thing. Just three knobs, nice and simple, and it's got a blend control, which so far, I think actually this is the only one with a blend control. So that's kind of a unique feature for this pedal. Um, you've got your regular, you know, volume, compression, and then blending. So let's go ahead and turn that on. Now we're blending half signal will be unaffected and the other half will be. Now when you go to the full, full amount, Oh yeah, you can really squash it. <laughs> Way too much. And then you can go almost unaffected here as well. So some really nice features on this one. All right, so now let's check out one of the budget offerings. This is from Behringer. This is the CL9. Um, really nice compression. This is a great setting. Um, just attack time about halfway up your volume and your compression level or sustain they call it and again just using these tele low output signal single coils you can get tons of sustain Definitely does the squishy sound thing. Um, really flexible, really affordable. So, you know, this is a great way to go if you're just getting into compression. Now the compressor from Orange is a fantastic pedal. You've got attack time, release time, you've got your overall volume, your compression level, which I have very, very high, and you get a tone control, which I absolutely love because as I mentioned, sometimes it kind of robs your treble. So you have a chime control here and also um, the LED kind of pulses as it kicks in. So a little bit of visual confirmation uh, that the compression is working as well. You know, and, and you know, if I squish it all the way, Still just like super, super controlled, very natural sounding, even with like, yeah, that compression all the way up. So I love that. And then you get the tone control. So absolutely fantastic. Uh, the audio quality is amazing and tons of flexibility. This is a great choice. Now moving on to the Strymon, we've got a volume and a compression level, very, very simple. And you get the added functionality of a boost pedal as well. So really cool, you can boost you know, your overall signal for soloing and there's a separate boost level control as well. And then a three-way toggle for um, EQ. So really cool stuff. Um, let's try it out. Yeah, I won't, I'll show you the boost after, but yeah, let's put the compression quite high and see what we got. Turn the volume up. Yeah, so you can get some of that squishy compression, but I think somewhere around here it sounds very, very natural, really nice. Really cool. And then of course you've got the boost, which is awesome. So 
to another great option. Now moving on, we have the Electro Harmonics. This is the Soul Preacher. Um, let's click this on. Now I found that the volume on this pedal is very, very low. So, you know, super, super low. You basically have to like crank it all the way up to get any sort of, you know, thickening to your sound. And it's really subtle. So you cannot use this pedal for boost um, and you pretty much have to run the volume all the way up. So that's one thing to note about that pedal. So definitely almost no volume boost and uh, feature set very limited. Um, so yeah, there you go. Very, very simple pedal. Um, I would probably choose some of the other ones over this one just for the added flexibility and the, you know, the ability to have a volume boost as well. And finally, let's go to the good old Boss compressor. So we've got overall volume. We've got another tone control, just like the orange. Love that. So you can add a little bit of treble back, especially if you're using more compression. If you're just using something subtle, then you know, you don't need it. Attack time, I've have, I have it set quite slow and then uh, your compression level. So there we go, let's try this thing out. Sounds fantastic to me. Let's uh, crank the compression. We up here, I'm gonna have to take the level down and maybe add a touch more treble. And let's make that attack time a little faster, see if it squishes it pretty good. Oh yes, it definitely does. Okay. Oh yeah, so you can you can definitely squash this to the moon here. Let's uh let's go something like that. See if we can kind of get that good old popping sound here. Yeah, really flexible, love the tone control, and boy, yeah, this thing can really clamp down if you want to. Um, and when you have those more subtle settings that I was uh, looking at before, let's increase the attack time, lower the sustain just a little bit, uh, volume and tone up a little bit. There we go. Uh, I think it sounds really fantastic, nice and natural. Now, a compression pedal is absolutely going to be your best friend if you're looking for some extra sustain primarily and some thickening of your tone, especially if you're playing clean and you just need, you know, a couple extra seconds on each note to, you know, let them bleed together or or if you're sustaining a note, you know, you're soloing totally clean or with some, some really minimal overdrive, uh, compression is absolutely gonna make a huge difference. And you don't have to go to any of these extreme settings that I showed you. Uh, you can keep things really subtle. And you know, for me, I just keep a, a compressor at the beginning of my board on all the time on a really, really subtle setting. And it just adds touch of sustain and some thickening, really makes a big difference. And of course, protects some of the peaking uh, volume when you really dig in. So which compression pedal would I choose for my board? Well, here we go. I'm gonna go through my favorites of these pedals. Number one was Analog Alien, Alien Compressor. Uh, really natural sounding, really easy to dial in sort of a set and forget sound because personally, I don't use compression for like, you know, an effects tone, you know, like for that real spanky tone, I don't really do that very much. So I want like a good set and forget sound um, that's not gonna rob my tone too much of high end, which this pedal didn't. I thought it was very, very good. Um, I didn't feel like I needed a tone control on it. It sounded very chimey, very natural. So love that pedal. Uh, number two was the Orange Compressor. This one sounded amazing. Did have the tone control, which is awesome, and a few extra knobs. So, you know, if you don't want the extra knobs, it might not be your best choice. Um, but I found that they're pretty forgiving as long as you, you know, I mean, even up to like, 
I don't know, like three o'clock, like the squish control all the way up. It sounded really natural. Only once you like totally dimed it, did it really, you know, get that really kind of squishy sound every time you played a note. Um, so I thought it sounded very natural, uh, loved it. The extra controls are really nice too. So that's my second pick. Uh, third, the Strymon. Uh, Sounded very natural again. Would have liked a tone control on it, but it sounds pretty good. Uh, I love, love, love the added uh, boost function. So, you know, if you want to solo, you just set the boost control via its dedicated knob. Off you go, you can do a solo or you can push uh, another overdrive pedal. Cause like I said, you want your compression at the beginning of your board. So if you have like a low gain pedal that you just want to push a little harder, you can just hit the boost on the compression pedal. So that added functionality is amazing. And I think the Behringer for budget, you know, very, very inexpensive. So if you don't, you know, you're not committed to spending like 200 bucks on a pedal, like some of these other ones, um, you know, going with the Behringer can't go wrong. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was clear enough so that you guys now can understand compression, uh, limiting, how to use it in an extreme way and in a subtle way. And hopefully, you know, gave you guys some good uh, pedals to check out as well. If you enjoy content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel. You can check out all my personal links for t-shirts, tab store, all that stuff in the video description below. Have yourself an amazing week. Take care.